and in this not very simple time for our planet. So the previous Congress, as, as you already said, and Michael Ostrovsky said, that it has a great success and it was oriented primarily on the optogenetics. And optogenetics plus is a very important plus because this actually gives a possibility to discuss the different actually problems which are around the optogenetics. And in this introduction first talk, I will present a little amount of our results, why we have rather good achievements, but I will talk in addition to optogenetics about other direction of non-invasion modulation of nervous system. So our brain is actually just, we know that very complicated system, it's actually is working actually just the groups of the neurons which are working in halves, and this, uh, some of them are organized in the cortical columns, which consist actually from 10 to 50,000 50, neurons altogether, which are complicated in a complicated way. And we have about 1,000 cell types, which are very difficult and provide actually information transfer in our brain. And this is a provided due to the different types of inhibitor and excited response so just to do that one and in addition to that we have to remember that synapses also are very plastic system so we actually have to to rely actually on this on the system to do non-invasive mod modulation on the nervous system we have to use the, the different just approaches like multiple physical chemical biochemical signals who operates in the harmony and complex, complex <coughs> feedback, just to do that one. And in the, this non-invasive control actually in, includes the neurotechnological approaches like optogenetics, photopharmacology, chemogenetics, and some other part of this, and I will discuss them with you all together. So to do that, we have actually to, to activate very precisely, actually just the part of the neurons in the in vivo and in, in vitro configuration and to be very careful with actually not to make a damage for, for the neural system. So optogenetics is a classical actual approach which we know already all together. It was beginning actually, official beginning is from 2005 to 2006 when Carl Dysidorf in 2006 actually make the introduction of optogenetics. But it's begin actually from the cloning of the uh, of the channel rhodopsin in the of the channel which is actually was activated by light and uh, it, there are some there is some noise actually which is coming i'm sorry which is coming from outside that way but i will continue i don't know can you hear me or not michael can you hear me no reply okay i don't know what is that yes we can yeah yes we can sorry i i just turned off my my microphone Okay, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Okay, so 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 the history of optogenetics will be uh, will will be done in the Payevsky's Payevsky's presentation. I will not go into the detail. The main idea of optogenetics is to use to transfer the light into the ionic current, which can produce excitation or inhibition of neurons. Just working on the whole cells, on the whole cells, so you can introduce this. Uh, this proteins on, in, on, on the cell, inside of the cell, you can depolarize or hyperpolarize the cell. And there is a big amount of the, of, of the tools of the seven transmembrane proteins, which can be with the different wavelengths, you can, you can modify, mod modify them. So the strategy is specific crops, light activated molecules, mode of activation, there's different wavelengths, and specificity of the expression in the different subtypes of the cell. And this approach actually just have the, can be used on the different levels from the synapse to neurons to the local circuits and the, to the whole brain and to the behavior to do that. And this is a health, has a number of advantages like a selective activation of specific cell types, fast activation of neurons on the, in the time scale of the synaptic events, and, the, and, the, and it can be just. <clears throat> animal behavior of doing that. And this is actually this pro 
is now actually very widespread and just had a management of the pain. There is a approach to the epilepsy, Parkinson's disease, and schizophrenia, as, as, as um, uh, Professor Strovsky said, actually, that in the medical, actually, there is a big, actually, so there are some problems, actually, of the application, uh, uh, even in the vision and hearing restoration, but in the vision, hearing restoration, actually, still uh, uh, are already just quite a, quite a good mm, 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 development. And this is actually particularly it's done is this actually very recent paper, which has appeared just one month ago, one month ago in March in Physiological Review, which has actually described the, the achievements in the, in the restoration of vision and hearing system. I'm just looking at that one. I don't know that one. <clears throat> So, I, but, but uh, in, in addition to the positive parts, actually just optogenetics, there, there are some, some difficulties, actually just you can do that to that one. So the one of them, one, it's not difficulties, but actually just one have to be to take a care that physiological firing rates and patterns actually have some, some range, actually very specific range and over excitation or over inhibition can produce some negative actual consequences like for instance, like <clears throat> if you will make an overexcitation, you can mm, stimulation out of physiological way and unsaturated plasticity of the circuits, or and it will lose, we will come to the incorrect conclusion about the circuits. And inhibition also can make some rebound excitation, which is which is come later on and actually can be actually very negative just to do that one. In addition to that, the light stimulation or the optogenetic can be can be also 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 the problem. And in the in the actually it's already known that actually that there is a problem on the uniformity of the stimulation because if you give a light, that the light actually on the distance about 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 0.5 millimeters, 500 microns is already disappeared on, on the 80 or Ninety percent, which is due to that one. With different wavelengths, you have the different deepness of the penetration. So these are actually just problems which we know already, and we just trying to avoid them. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And 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 this actually will, will give you. Sorry. will give you no, no uniform the excitation and inhibition of, of the light just to do that one. And there is another one problem actually, which is actually just rather important. And this is actually the heat. The heat and system actually this the thermal, the, the, when you, when you uh, give the illumination, you give the light and the light as actually illumination is about, about from three to 15 milliwatts. And this actually, this is usually common, usually actually power in the optogenetics experiments. And this illumination can produce the elevation of the heat. And this heat can give the activation of some, of some channels, particularly potassium channels. And it was appeared, the recent paper, which is, was done in the Nature Neuroscience in the, in the last year, which gives a very careful investigation on these approaches, of this approach, and it is shown that this very activation of inward directified potassium conductance, and it gives actually just even not changes in the in the nervous system system actual activation of neurons in normal conditions, but actually in the behavior, the behavior of the moon, if you will just make the illumination with this power of the of the animal which does not have channel rhodopsin, actually it change it change the, the, the direction of the moment. So one have to be careful about about that one. So how to how to avoid this actually to avoid this actually and one have to be careful about the control of the of the optogenetic inhibition from one side and from the other side this low intensity of illumination and development of light more light sensitive protein with red shifted opsins and also tapered fibers actually which to, to be to make a more concentrated concentrated light or make more efficient emitting diets just to do that one. So 
So this is actually just a browser of the genetics. I'm sorry, this I see just half of the screen of, of, of my screen because there are faces somewhere. I don't know whether the technical people can tell me how can I take away the, the, the faces because I cannot see actually just my screen altogether. I, I see just, just faces of that. Петр Дмитриевич, сверху над вашей фотографией есть три кнопки. Нажмите самую последнюю над вашей фотографией. Так. Вы видите там над вашей фотографией мышкой ага. поводите? А, да. А, убрать. Да. Ой, спасибо, Мишенька, дорогой. Хорошо, потому что вот все, мне сейчас легче стало, потому что я видел пол экрана, и поэтому я говорил просто по памяти то, что вот было. Сейчас много лучше стало. Вот. Okay, I'm sorry. Actually, I'm coming into, into, into the English. Actually, just let's talk, let's go to, the, to the another approach about to, to, to the photopharmacology. In the optogenetics, actually, what I told you, that you can express the light The, uh, the light sensitive proteins inside on in the whole cell. So you can activate the cell, the cell population, which gives you actually the, uh, this activation of some other subtypes of the, of the neurons. But actually our nervous system, as I told you, is working on the level of the synaptic transmission. And on the synaptic transmission, you have specific sizes, excitatory or inhibitory. And so you have to be much more precise in the, in the activation actually just to, to, do, to do these things. And unfortunately for the moment, there are actually people trying just to, to do that, but there is no possibility to excite specifically using optogenetics just, 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 just on, on the spines or, 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 or the synapses, very specific synapses. And you can activate specific ionic channels with this one. This allows to do another approach, which is called optopharmacology. And um, optopharmacology actually is used for compounds which are connected with the photo switches altogether, and it provides you the creation of the, com of the compounds which control the function of biological mo molecules by using photosensitive switches. So, what are these photosensitive switches? Photosensitive switches. Actually, there are the molecules which change the conformation actually from the trans to cis configuration actually with the different wavelengths. It's like in our eye, actually, just we, this is actually just photo switching is working, opposite are working in our, in our uh, visual system. And uh, there are several subtypes of them. Um, I will, uh, uh, will show you only two of them. This is other benzenes and fulgimines actually which other benzenes is particularly interesting because can change the conformation and change the the actually the distance in the transfiguration is a flat is a flat and it's about nine angstrom but with the uv illumination its change is illusion this is one nitrogen band is lost and it's actually just make a band in, like this one from this position to this position and actually change the distance on about about five angstrom and it's quite a big distance actually in the changes so if you will make now the 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 the, the compound which is consists have the other benzene with a link and with some specific effector so you can change the light and you can activate or in, inactivate The, the function of the specific the function of the ionic channels of some other specific proteins. But if you can make even much better molecule if you will add some link eh, like anchor. So you can add the anchor and this anchor can be connected with some specific protein in the specific space. So you have the very good distance actually for the activation and inactivation of the, the system. So in general, the system is working like this. So this is the main principle. Of, of the achievements. So you have the ligand, and this ligands can be this one of this approach because the ligands the neurotransmitters, specific, specific neurotransmitters for glutamate, for GABA, for glycine, for another system which are very, uh, which are natural. So as a natural, it can activate the specific receptors. It can be connected with a calculated distance of the linger. This is a switch, 
and here in maybe another Lincoln is necessary and it can be anchor which can interact with some specific specific molecules on the surface of amino acid on the surface of the of the of the, of the receptor. So I will use the example here of this construct, chemical construct. Here the, the ligand is a glutamate, the linker is calculated linker, and this is the other benzene, which is a switch, and this is a rather short linker, and another the maremide, which works as a linker. Okay. So if we, as we know, the, the crystal structure of the of the glutamate receptor. So the glutamate receptor, this it is already beginning of the genetic photopharmacology. You can make as a mutation in this point, and here this is it, you can put here in this position the, the cysteines. The cysteines will interact with malamide, and malamide interaction in the trans configuration. This system is inact. Is the channel not activated, but when you when you, when you gives the wavelength change the wavelengths to UV, you can the, the, the depolarization of the neurons and excitation and just in this way. And this approach actually has been done and has been used actually in for the in the transgenic animals, like in the zebra fish, you can change the movement of this one and it it is working on the modulation of the nervous system very successfully. This is Lincoln. This is a very good approach which is working on that one. So so the actually the main the, the main beauty actually of the photopharmacology is the possibility to specifically activate some specific channels on the surface just to do that one. You can specifically activate either whole synapses or specific different ionic channels. For instance, the glutamate synapses there are colocalization of, of kinate and MDA and AMPA receptors. So you can you can specifically modify the function of the NMDA receptor or only on the AMPA receptors. And so you can modify the function actually on the on the other circuits of just doing that one. And this approach with this approach, you can modulate the function of potassium, sodium, calcium channels with CRP channels. And this became actually widely used actually for expressing some enzyme system like the protein kinases, esterases, thrombin, phosphatases, and even so for the modulation of the cytoskeleton. I will give you actually just a <clears throat> couple of examples actually from our, our research which has been done. We, during last year, as we are working on the investigation of the function of this so-called cis loop receptors uh, superfamily, which is, as you know, consists of the of the two main mm, main subtypes of the of the subfamily. They are so-called cation selective cis loop proteins like acetylcholine or, or <coughs> serotonin, and inhibitory anion selective like like GABA and uh, uh, glutamine and, and glycine, I'm sorry, and glycine. So these are pentaric proteins have a loop extracellular domain, full transmembrane domain, and long cytoplasmic domain. And the second transmembrane domain is particularly important because it is it is provides the ionic selectivity to do that part. So 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 GABA and glycine receptors are anion selective, so they produce a high popularization of the membrane during the excitation. And GABA, as you know, is the main inhibitory neurotransmitter in, in our brain. And, <clears throat> and the many diseases actually which are connected with the dysfunction of these receptors like epilepsy, hyperplexia, and some other disorders like, <clears throat> which is connected with with anxiety and depression disorders, with schizophrenia, with 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 other subtypes of the of the disorders, just to do that one. So the for the, the checking, the looking for the specific compounds actually could be which could specifically modify the nervous system actually during the light activation would be very very important to do that one. So and we and we actually for for modulation. The glycine GABA receptors, that actually for the GABA receptors, we selected the compound which is called diazepam because the diazepam is a one of the actually just widely used compound for the modulation of the, the, the GABA receptor function. 
that the GABA receptor, uh, GABA receptor has actually the site for the interaction with the GABA, with the neurotransmitter, and another one, which is a modulator of the, of, of the, of the benzodiazepam. And this diazepam actually in nanomolar concentration can potentiate the function of the receptor. But diazepam has actually, it has been shown, has three places for the interaction. This is one actually on the interaction between GABA and alpha subunit. Another one actually with a low affinity site, which prevents potentiation of this one between alpha one and beta two subunit. And it is known actually had the sad part of the interaction with the, with the low affinity site on the, during the transmembrane domain. So the diazepam has been used actually just widely used um, as a compound in the United States and in the different countries, and now it actually is is wiser, wisely used actually <clears throat> actually to, to the prevent the the, the, the epilepsy seizures events just with, with the different people. So we use this compound, and actually in collaboration we have the collaboration of the several teams from from the Spain, Germany, and uh, and Russia and France, <clears throat> and. Uh, we use actually two approaches. One of them is actually fulgimide-based photochrome for the GABA. This is a fulgimide. This is a molecule which actually have the open configuration in this ring and closed configuration. So in the open configuration and closed configuration have, have different properties. So we, the, it has been connected by the, the current raster to, to, together with, with diazepam. And this actually just molecule can be switched from the from the open to closed configuration. And when we express it in the in the human embryonic kidney cells and use an electrophysiological recording, with electrophysiological recording, you can apply to this one to the cell, you can apply the, the drug in, in the specific concentration and with in control condition with GABA and glycine or, or with, with the agonist, and you can use a light emitting diode for the mod modification, modulation of the UV light. So in this case, so you can actually investigate the function of these constructed molecules on the, on, on the responses to the GABA receptor. And what has been shown, I, what two, we find out? Two minutes, Peter. <laughs> Sorry? Uh, two more minutes, okay. I have 25 minutes. Do, do I have 40 minutes of, 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 of talking of that one or not? Oh, I'm sorry. I, I looked at the in wrong, wrong watch. So, sorry, sorry. So, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. sorry. Yes, I, I calculate this one. No, 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 no. It's okay. It's okay. Excuse me. Okay, so, so we find actually that this compound actually can produce a powerful potentiation of the response and just to do that one, about 400 just to do this one. This is shown, shown on this slide. So the fulgimide actually is, is, a, is a powerful potentiator of the GABA receptor. And this have actually now we will, we, when it will be synthesized in part of this compound, we use it on the, on the animals to do that on the brain slides. Another is actually just as a benzene compound photochrome, which is actually was <clears throat> used also this diazepam, and we, without coming to the details, actually it, it, it was shown actually that it can produce the inhibition of the GABA receptor. So this is other benzene, this is the nitro-diazepam, nitro so actually this is actually just incorporated in this, in the, in this molecule, so this is a very good there, efficient compounds, but we find out that it is produced the inhibition of the of the of the of the currents and with the, in the in the UV light illumination. And we find out that is without coming into the details that it is working on the level of the of the of the transmembrane domain on the on the on here on this part below the below on the, on the bottom part of the membrane. Actually it is interact somewhere here in this position just to, to, to this one. So it is working as the inhibitor of the GABA ergic and glycinergic chloride channels in the, in the system with the other benzene system. And it has been shown actually photochromic modulation of the GABA ergic cup currents in the brain slices. It has been done actually in Kazan on the, on the 
on the slides in the hippocampal slices by Pitikova and Panamarova, they will present the poster here in this session. And they find out that if you will make the stimulation of the of, mm, 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 of the shocker collaterals or some other sense, and you will make a recordance or, or in the control condition when you apply the, the, this compound actually produce inhibition with the UV light and produce a restoration of working of this system. So it is working actually just very nicely, very, very powerfully for the modulation of the, of the synaptic transmission in the, in the brain, which is very different. So the other benzene is a light control blocker of the cis loop receptor channels. This is actually the, of the summer of this, of this two photochromic compound. So the diazepam full gimid actually can produce a powerful potentiation and other benzene nitrazepam can produce a powerful inhibition of the system. So for pharmacological compounds, actually this approach actually has a number of advantages. It gives you high specificity of action, channels and receptors and, and synapses can be worked on the, on the specific synapses to do that, to do this one. And it's used for the, in the voltage gated channels, ionotropic receptors, enzyme and some other things. And there are some, but the problems actually, this is actually overexpression of gene can alter receptor density in normal conditions. So there is another problem. This is incomplete photo control for the trans to cis uh, uh, configuration. So you can have about 90% of the transitions. So there are and the 10% which are not changes and it can be just produce some problems to do with that one. Another problem is actually just light delivery, which is actually the problem with the optogenetics and, and Photopharmacology also for this one, so you can do it in the in the deep part of the brain, and also there is a problem with it if you are using the UV illumination, it causes cause can cause a modulation of the protein in some and the side effects just to do that one. So the solutions are so so the switches with a high cis transition capabilities. There are people working on this one. This, to use the switches with the ray led shifted wavelengths and also to use the other energy sources can, which can mo produce the modes of the photo switches. This is actually also an also important approach is to produce that. <clears throat> and another approach is chemogenetics. About the chemogenetics, I, I think it will be the talk mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. during this meeting. I will just will tell you just very shortly about this approach. Remind that one. So chemogenetics, the, the story of chemogenetics begin actually from the problem of the investigation of the G proteins because we have 800 G protein receptors. This is a very wide family of the receptors which, which can modulate all the, our nervous system. And to find out the pathway of its modulated is a very difficult task. Because, because you, if you will apply one one neurotransmitter, it can uh, can activate several subtypes of the of the G protein system, and it has been tasked, which is it has been tasked to develop the 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 G proteins which can reply on the non-specific inert compounds. Here, it has been find out actually chlorazepine and oxide which can activate the mutated uh, G protein receptor. So they, it, if you will make the mutation just in one of two points, actually you, uh, the neurotransmitter for the acetylcholine is losing. Acetylcholine cannot activate the G protein, but, but, but clozepime can activate this, this G protein system. So it can activate this inert compound. It's it not interact with no one other tissue, but only with this receptor. Can, can activate the, the, this, this receptor just to do this one. But, but the ligand, specific ligand, actually cannot do that one to do this thing. So this is actually, it's developed so-called designer receptor, exclusively activated designer drugs. Actually, it's rather the horrible long name of this one, but actually it is, it is, it is a very powerful approach. Why? Because it allows you actually to, to use inert compounds to the activate different mutated G proteins, which actually when you, it is, they are not 
uh, response to the acetylcholine or noradrenaline on some part of the neurotransmitter, but they respond to this, to this inert mm. molecule and which can actually produce the actually mm, activation of second message systems in the diethyl gristolop mm, protein kinase or activation of the cyclic AMP protein kinase A or some other system just to this effect. So, and this approach is actually is, is very good because you can put these dread, different dreads for which are sensitive to different neurotransmitters in the specific promoters and you can selectively express is in the different part of the brain brains and then you can actually make the injection of the adenovirus dreads in the brain and just express it in the neurons and you can have a look on the behavior of them actually just you can give you can inject other on the in, in the vein of the NCO or you 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 can actually give to eat it actually to them and and they can have the they can have the behavior so this is a good approach for this one this is this is can be analyzed for the analysis of the neurogenerated diseases models in the epilepsy it was already used for the visual attention for the co cognitive performance actually it has been done and uh, and also for the blood glucose regulation for the other system just to do this one so some problems with this one so the, the, this is the problems of re receptor expression levels can be either too high or very low or in vivo might be have effect of the signal that then of the native receptor, it may be also coming to the misinterpretation of the data. So this is actually, this approach gives another exciting <clears throat> development, which is so-called acoustically targeted chemogenetics. So acoustically targeted chemogenetics actually use these approaches, which I already described. This is expression of dreads in specific adenovirus vectors, using the dreads agonist for specific modulation of the targeted neurons this is the fluorazepine and oxide it can be used orally just to do that one but also if you will use the focus ultrasound blood land barrier opening okay so it will give you just opening of the of the blood band barrier and you can make the transfection of cells without Without injection, without the surgery, and this is actually one of the of, of the beauty of this approach. So actually, what it is shown very good on, on the on this slide. So so you can you you can introduce the adenovirus in 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 the vein, and you can make the elimination of the of the vein just in the very local area. This area area it can be about one millimeter volume just to do that one square millimeter volume just to do that one so and you can change that over here you can transfer the cells and you can express the the gene expressing the proteins and then you can you can have it in, in, in the in specific part of the brain and you can you can see this expression here it is not very beautiful picture actually this is shown just just gfp expression uh, with adenovirus which is told actually the dynamics of the expressions of after seven days, 14 days, 25 days, and that which is going so, but it can be, if you will use the specific promoters, you will express it in very specific cell types, just to look at that one. So, so this is so-called attack, attack, acoustically targeted chemogenetic, chemogenetic systems. Actually, it is important for non-invasive neuromodulation it is actually gives you actually unique the possibility for the special cell type and temporal specificity for non-invasive modulation without the need of permanently attached or implanted devices for the it has the minimal non-specific effects and due to the relatively simplicity attack could be came clinical relevant why? Because you don't need actually to make the surgery. You can just make the injection. You, you can make the artificial expression of the neuroproteins like that. So, so what problems with this one? This is a problem. So for the intensity of the blood band barrier opening, you have, there are some details 
which one have to be careful. I have no time to, 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 to talk about that one. This is special distribution, so, so volume actually maybe not controlled very precisely and not uniform intensity. This is not uniform intensity. This is problems of all these approaches that we looked at of that one. So level of adenovirus expression and use, it is rather difficult, use of several ligands for the chemogenetic receptor. So this actually just, I very shortly described all the approaches for the non-invasion modulation nervous system, just part of this one. The other part, it will be discussed in the other talks during the meeting, I'm pretty sure, the magnetic stimulation, thermal control, magnetogenetics, but all of them are, are, give the powerful approaches to study molecular and functional organizational nervous system for the control of neuronal activity, for the behavior changes of doing of that one, and for the different types of the pathologies. And I hope that in the future, we will have the actually just big achievements actually in using this system. So thank you for your attention.